I would like to welcome you to this tutorial about the use of endovascular lithotripsy for the treatment of severely calcified peripheral arterial disease. My name is Konstantinos Stavroulakis and I'm consultant of vascular and endovascular surgery. In the first chapter of this tutorial, we'll go through the challenges that we face when we treat heavily calcified disease, as well as the mechanism of action of the peripheral IVL system. There is no doubt that uh, severely calcified disease represents the Achilles heel of endovascular therapy. When we treat heavily calcified vessels, we have increased risks for dissections, perforation, embolization, even despite with the use of uh, distal protection devices. We have to deal with excessive vessel recoil, and when we deploy scaffolds, sometimes even the stents crash. Unfortunately, the majority of physicians tend to treat heavily calcified disease with a plain old balloon angioplasty. This leads to an overstress of the non-diseased tissue, causing dissections, recoil, excessive injury, and of course poor outcomes, not only in the short run, but also in the long run. As this important paper shows, the, the, the degree of calcification, the severity of the disease, impacts the long-term outcomes of endovascular treatment even with the use of permanent scaffolds. Endovascular lithotripsy is based on the principles of the kidney stone treatment. The sonic pressure waves uh, used for the kidney stone treatments impact heart tissue, disrupt calcium, and leave stone tissue uh, undisturbed. In the endovascular lithotripsy that we use for peripheral arterial disease, but also for the coronaries, we have miniaturized and arrayed uh, lithotripsy emitters for localized lithotripsy at the site of the vascular calcium. The difference is that the extracorporeal lithotripsy used large focus energy to fracture the kidney stones, whereas the IVL system uses an hydraulic lithotripsy mechanism, a smaller unfocused energy to fracture the calcium while leaving soft tissue undamaged. The shockwave system consists of three parts. The generator, which is portable and rechargeable. It doesn't have any external connections and the setup is very quick and easy. The connector cable, which has simple magnetic connections between the generator and the IVL catheter and has the button activation of the shockwaves. And finally, the IVL catheter, which is compatible with any O14 uh, guide wire uh, you have in your cath lab. IVL uses simple PTA technology as a mechanism for delivery. Cross the lesion with a standard uh, guide wire, then exchange for an O14 guide wire, and then inflate uh, the shockwave catheter to a subnormal pressure of four atmospheres just to attain a good opposition to the vessel wall. When the button of the connector cable is pressed, an electric signal is sent from the generator through via connect cable to the emitters with the integrated balloon delivering one pulse per second. Sonic pressures then uh, travel through the vessel with an effective pressure of 15 atmospheres. A localized field effect within the vessel fractures both intimal and medial calcium. After the delivery of the pulses, then you have to inflate the catheter to 6 atmosphere to improve the luminal gain. The peripheral IVL catheters uh, are the M5 and the S4 catheters. The M5 is designed for iliac and the fempop disease, whereas the S4 catheter is designed for the treatment of BTK vessels. Uh, the M5 catheter is uh, available in the diam diameters between 3.5 and 7 millimeters and had a, it has a length of 60 uh, millimeters. The S4 catheter is available between 2.5 and 4 millimeters and has a length of 40 uh, millimeters. Both catheters, both the M5 and the S4 catheters for above and below the knee's disease house an array of lithotripsy emitters. The M5 catheter has five emitters, whereas the S4, four. When we activate the shockwave catheter, we can uh, deliver 30 pulses 
per cycle with M5 catheter and in overall 300 pulses. On this, uh, with, you, when we use the S4 catheter, we can deliver 20 pulses per cycle and in overall 160 pulses. These cycles allow for a low inflation time to restore flow to the vessel as soon as possible. Although the IVL technology is very easy to use, there are two things that we have to keep in mind when we're using the peripheral IVL system. First of all, the experience with the technology highlighted the importance of correct balloon sizing, which is crucial to, to ensure appropriate long-term outcomes. Lithotripsy is delivered through an IVL catheter at, at a sub-nominal pressure of four atmospheres. Appropriate IVL balloon catheter apposition is crucial for the best outcomes. We have to keep in mind that we have to slightly oversize the IVL catheter compared to the, the reference vessel diameter. So the ratio would be 1.1 to 1 regarding the, rest, the reference vessel diameter. The second crucial part is that, is that we have to overlap the, treat, the, the catheters in the treatment segment so that we will not have a geographical mismatch, as the end of the catheters do not produce any sonic waves.